This is uh, the major river basins of Tamil Nadu. You got uh, major. There are uh, ma large number of other minor river basins. This, uh, these are the ma major river basins. I am going to talk about a few like uh, Kaveri. The third one is a uh, Palar, and then I am going to talk about a little bit on uh, uh, the Noyal, and also uh, the 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 fourth one, the last one, which is a uh, Kosathliar, which is also part of the Chennai River Basin. Chennai has got a good number of uh, waterways. I will also talk about it. But uh, while I was traversing <coughs> through all these river basins. in fact uh, as professor ayer was uh, since he was asking talk about mm -hmm. also the living rivers just not about uh, the non living rivers i really could not find any living rivers in tamil nadu frankly this is not my mm -hmm. uh, the, what i wanted to say but this is very very unfortunate now you are going to say that now this is actually uh, the map of uh, the palar river basin palar is actually one of uh, the important rivers in southern india and in tamil nadu This again interstate, which uh, starts from the uh, state of Karnataka, and then a major part uh, uh, goes through Tamil Nadu. But the total length is about 340, 350 kilometers. This is an extremely important river, unique river. And next to Kaveri, uh, these three, four districts uh, in which this uh, river traverses through was considered the second granary of Tamil Nadu once, not now. and the river is really unique in the sense that at many parts of uh, the river, river in the, the distance of 340 kilometers 340 kilometers the width is about 1 and 1/2 to 2 kilometers that's that big a river once it was carrying water to its full capacity not not any more and uh, uh, that wide river with a 30 to 40 feet of sand deposit was having a very good river bed aquifer it was known for an extremely good water Uh, particularly the, the river through the river bed aquifer and this river used to remain dry for most part of the year except for the one month during monsoon months for rest of the uh, period uh, uh, year it was actually dry but the river bed aquifer was very active and uh, this river bed aquifer was serving uh, four five districts for drinking water and irrigation uh, irrigation needs at least of uh, uh, 40 50 years ago today it is dead the river is dead and uh, and all those dots that you find in this uh, uh, during the distance of the 240 kilometers they are all the clusters of uh, tanneries leather tanneries so the, the leather tannery is one of the biggest industries in tamil nadu in this in this river basin and uh, the ta there are about uh, 900 tanneries majority of them registered a few uh, 25% of them are unregistered small medium and so on and uh, these have been ex in existence for at least 100 years this is not uh, a, a came the, the, these industries have not come up in the recent times but what made a difference was uh, uh, actually a policy decision taken during uh, in, in 1975 by the then uh, prime minister indira gandhi until 1975 tamil nadu and india was exporting semi finished leather and when you were doing the semi finished leather the process of tanning was done through what is called a bark uh, trees uh, uh, some kind of a vegetable tanning and uh, so that did not give any kind of uh, you know environmental impact that the water was in fact used for irrigation purposes <coughs> when nine, in 1975 when we were really facing the severe problem of uh, foreign exchange the then prime minister uh, said why do we after all do the dirty job and then uh, export the semi finished leather for them to finish the leather you do the f f finishing process also so she banned semi finished leather export and said you can export only the finished leather that particular process needed chemical tanning tanning that is when you introduced chrome tanning process so once when you started using the chrome tanning then the whole problem started in the polar basin so it is actually the the period was 1975 onwards the actual pollution load started so since 1975 when the chrome tanning was started then the 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 supply the, the the importers from europe and north america they started supplying uh, chemicals inputs for tanning process some of them were unknown inputs we don't know and one particular chemical was identified as a cyanide one kind of a cyanide that's also used for a tanning process i believe that is what really gives a shining in your uh, you know the, the shoot uh, 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 uppers and belts and so on so these are the kind of a chemicals used and that is the biggest pollutants used uh, in, in 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 the uh, tanning process and secondly other biggest pollutant is a common salt sodium chloride uh, there is a process called a pickling process when the leather is actually gathered from different parts of the country and in fact today 
from we are collecting um, the the raw hides and skins from different parts of the world from africa latin america even from europe we collect semi the the, the 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 raw hides and skins through the pickling process bring all of them ship everything to chennai uh, and tamil nadu and to kanpur and then do the tanning process so we get raw hides and skins from different parts of the world this is considered the dirty industry dirty, the dirtiest industry in the world there are two countries which do this tanning process in a big scale one is uh, india other one is bangladesh so we take the entire pollution load and then export uh, the, the good uh, f- finished leather to uh, finish uh, to, to really clean up one uh, raw hides and skins uh, you you uh, for 1 kg you need 40 liters of water with that 40 liter of water all that you do is to clean up the salt and nothing else and you need much more water for tanning process so you need a very very water intensive industry and then it really takes and tons and tons and tons of salt washed away every day into the river that is another thing what is called the tds got to contribute to the pollution uh, but but we are also the biggest earner of foreign exchange through uh, the um, uh, leather tanning process and now our uh, export from polar basin alone comes to about 10000 crores we earn about 10000 crores by exporting finished leather and it gives employment to something like 3 4 lakh people that is true but then the other side flip side of, of that is that you know we lost environment water is polluted river is dead ground water is polluted we, there's a huge crisis in, in agriculture because of the reduced uh, um, uh, 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 yield and then uh, polluted soil polluted ground water and loss of employment <coughs> so this is uh, this is this why is John move up why are you sitting in the back so this is this, this is about uh, the uh, polar um, now look at uh, this uh, extent of pollutants generated in the two major tannery centers of the polar basin and uh, this is all kilograms per day this is uh, total suspended solids is a uh, 26635 to 51980 is a, is a total pollution in a place called ranipet in vanimbadi there's another range look at the tds total dissolved salts is called as a common salt is a 92465 to 198246 so many kilograms per day is let into the polar river can you imagine it's it's a so many kilograms and in in a, in, in a vanimbadi cluster 82409 to 1,21,109 kilograms per day of salt is to washed away every day into the, the polar river and then you got a bod cod sulfide and a total chromium chromium so can you imagine so many it's a heavy metal it is so so dangerous look at the, the the thousands of kilograms of chromium is washed away into the the polar river although now they have installed what is called a chrome recovery plant this chrome recovery plant i believe once they recover it's not usable they only have to uh, you know uh, dispose it somewhere therefore they don't even recover these days so that is the state of the condition yield of paddy again in the affected and the unaffected village in the agriculture is drastically reduced and you will see is a number of wells reporting in the 56 and uh, now the tanks and rivers and the streams are uh, completely dead the well irrigation is the only source of irrigation in the polar basin now and um, grass irrigated area under paddy is now uh, uh, 57.54 acres in the affected villages whereas it is uh, unaffected it is 456 and uh, and this this of the sample sample uh, farmers and grass irrigated area is so low in the affected villages and yield is 614 kg Uh, per acre in the affected village whereas it in unaffected village 1857 is a is a three times more in uh, uh, in the in the in the affected village therefore you know the, the impact on agriculture is quite visible and in fact in many parts of uh, uh, the polar basin people are shifting uh, from paddy rice cultivation to the coconut and coconut is also really a, a, a 